I'm Tim McGrath from Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. We're at Corbett and Barris Tritton's property, Silver Hills, at Richmond in northwest Queensland. We're at a commercial demonstration site. The main aim of this project is to grow in this environment under dry land conditions a high energy silage that's similar to the benchmark being corn and it can make up a major component of a beef fit and finishing ration. It takes three things to grow a high quality silage. The first thing is the right crop selection and varieties for the environment. It needs to be harvested at the right dry matter percentage and optimum nutrition and it needs to be stored in a system that's going to maintain that nutrition uh, or enhance it through to feed out whether that's six months or six years. In the northwest in typical black soil uh, Mitchell grass downs country they're in a 14 to 16 inch rainfall belt rainfall reliability is quite low uh, so we've gone for uh, grain sorghum the main reason is grain sorghum is the most water efficient crop we have. Uh, it is a relatively short crop, so this crop is grown uh, from planting to harvest is around 87 days. And we know we can make a high quality ration suitable for finishing cattle. We've gone for two varieties here. Uh, the first variety is this one, which is Liberty sorghum. It's a white variety. The QDAF dairy team have done a lot of work with it. It's had a huge uptake in the dairy industry, so it reliably makes a high quality silage. The research has shown that the white grain, the digestibility of the starches is slightly higher than some of the red varieties. The second variety we've gone to is a red. Uh, Mr. Baisley, it's a proven performer in dry land environments and harsh environments. Uh, it maintains its, its uh, grain size even in harsh conditions. This is a 200 hectare paddock. It had a forage sorghum crop put in last year, just an opportunist crop after the uh, Gulf floods. So there was a bit of residual trash. Uh, it received very good rainfall in late January, February, around the 200 mil mark. So we planted on the 10th of February on a full profile. The paddock was just sprayed out with glyphosate and direct drilled in sorghum at two kilos per hectare um, at metre wide rows. There was no fertiliser applied at plant. The fertiliser was drilled in a row in mid-March at urea at 100 kilos per hectare. The crop received very little in-crop rain. There was only about 80 mils and the last of that rainfall event was on the 12th of March, which is eight weeks from harvest. So the crop's done extremely well on what we could essentially say is a failed season. This, this crop is, is ready to be harvested now. It's at around about the 30% dry, 35% dry matter. The grains, the grains are at the doughy stage. So the sorghum crop dries from the head down um, so the top grains are a little bit harder, the middle grains are at the doughy stage and the bottom they're a little bit milky. This is the time when all the pests are just starting to show interest in the crop. It's all the birds, the pigs, uh, the roos, grasshoppers, they're already just started to come in. The beauty about the grain silage is that we can chop it and put it in the pit before we lose too much. There's three types of silages that we can make. The crop has got some versatility. So the first one is what we call whole chop, or just normal silage, where we chop the whole plant. We end up with a fairly high quality silage, um, about 20% 20, 20 starch, um, dry matter around 35%. The energy levels, ME, will be around nine and a half and our crude protein levels percentages are around about 11 or 12. Uh, we get a lot of bulk and on this particular crop our estimated yields are around about the 10 to 15 tons per hectare as fed. The second one we can do is what we call head leads where we chop it below the first leaf. A uh, lot of grain we end up with about 50% starch 
ME levels around 11 and a half and crude protein at about 12. Ideal for a finishing ration and can also be mixed with other silage types. And what's left is what we call footledge. Um, lower quality silage can be taken and be used for things like maintenance feeding in drought or it can be left in the paddock and grazed or just left as stubble for uh, soil health. Uh, as a head ledge, we want it around about um, 50, 55% dry matter. Estimated yields on this crop is around the five to six tonne uh, as fed uh, per hectare. Um, the critical thing is, is that we make sure that during the harvesting that the grains are processed. So this particular harvester has holes in the back that are adjusted so all the grains are crushed or cracked so when they're in the pit, they're already processed and it's feed ready. Um, that's a critical thing. If we don't do that, we end up with a lot of whole grains going through the beast uh, into their dung undigested. Other key components for storage, I recommend we consult an expert. This includes storage design for the volumes we regularly harvest, but also our daily feed out volumes. We need to make sure we have the right inoculants for the crop, suitable plastic that maintains the quality during storage and reduces spoilage, and also right compactions. If you want any more information, contact your local future beef officer.